what do Neville Goddard, Abraham Hicks, and Dr. Joe Dispenza all have in common? Don't worry, I'll wait. <laughs> I will make you wait. So they all believed in a law that Neville spoke about. It's called the law of reversibility. Neville explains the law of reversibility by stating that if a physical fact can produce a psychological state, then a psychological state can produce a physical fact. In other terms, if a circumstance can produce an imaginal act, then an imaginal act can produce a circumstance. Now Neville got this concept from the law of thermodynamics, which basically talks about how when you freeze water, it becomes a solid. But then if you heat it, it becomes liquid. And if you heat it further, it becomes a gas. And that this process can then be reversed by cooling off gas, which would then make it a liquid, and then cooling that off further, which would then make it frozen again, back to being solid. And so Neville got this concept from nature in thermodynamics, but it applies to so many other things. And that's why we call it the law of reversibility. If A can produce B, then B can inversely produce A. He then used this theory in his teachings to, to show people that instead of letting circumstance be the influence of your imaginal acts, be the steward of your own mind. Be the steward of your own imaginal acts. As you gain disciplinary control over your mind, you then get to direct it in the direction of what you want and take your attention off of things you don't want. Because if imaginal acts create circumstances and you are imagining mostly what you do not want, guess what you're influencing in your reality? The creation of those circumstances that you do not want. Neville further encourages us to imagine more lovely things. He says many of us experience hell on earth because we continue to imagine unlovely things. So he encourages us to imagine more lovely things so that we can influence the world around us to be more lovely, starting with ourselves, starting with our inner environment. Joe does the same when he tells you to live that future now because he wants you to practice embodying the feelings of your future self because all you're really after is the feeling you think it will give you. So practice it now because circumstances can influence imagination and imagination can influence circumstance. Dr. Joe Dispenza teaches us that the mere attention and focus upon any subject is like signals to the universe telling it, give me more of that. And so he teaches us to gain control of our minds through meditative practices, while Neville, in his own ways, did the same when he introduced the states akin to sleep, which is simply getting in a relaxed, almost meditative state where you might be able to even drift off to sleep, but instead of falling asleep, you tune in to where your imagination goes and you implant in your imaginative act what it is you prefer. And so if that can influence your reality and somehow influence your circumstance, then why not be a proactive, cooperative component as Abraham and Esther Hicks talk about? Abraham says, get in the vortex. What is the vortex? The vortex is basically everything that you desire. Everything that, as Abraham says, you've been sending rockets of desire out into the universe, telling it, hey, this thing that I'm experiencing, I prefer this instead. They tell us to get into the vortex. That means instead of focusing our attention on what we don't want, shift, you know, shift your mental capacity to what you prefer. If that means ignoring what's in front of you, not for the sake of denying reality, but for the sake of not giving it your emotional feedback. It doesn't need your emotional feedback. They are all ultimately encouraging us to live in the end, to live in the frequency of our desires instead of the memories of the past of unwanted things and circumstances. Because if a circumstance can create an imaginal act, then an imaginal act can create a circumstance. That, my friend, is the law of reversibility in a nutshell. You got this.